All right, it's time for some more late night Ukraine updates. So let's get into it. I can't wait for this to be over. I said the sanctions wouldn't do anything. Here we are with them already discussing more measures to take because they didn't do anything. I told you this would probably turn into guerrilla warfare. Here we are with Russia taking longer than they thought they would need to for the invasion to occur. And now everyone's withdrawing the city, so everyone's around the city. You could definitely tell the Russians are picking up the pace of what they're doing. Lots of experts are saying that they uh, missed their timeline for how long the invasion would take. And I still anticipate that the next thing we're going to see is that it's going to be extremely difficult for them to maintain control of this, you know, country the size of France, 44 million people, uh, and they're going to need to stay occupied there. This is going to cause, this is going to, this is going to be a massive economic and manpower disposal from Russia. And I don't know with everything going on, if they really want to juggle this. So, but Putin isn't backing down, which brings me, leads me to think that maybe some of my preconceived notions were wrong. And, and so we've, I've dug into that and we found some more information. And it does seem like there are a lot of rumors that people close to Putin are saying that he's a little, uh, he's been very isolated as of late. He's been more aggressive. That's definitely apparent in the recent speeches we've given, although he is at war. So I don't. I don't know how much to really put in that, but there was a video of him yelling at his advisors and staff. That definitely seemed aggressive for someone who's usually, you know, a little, has like a bit of a, a jokey personality actually, um, and is usually very cordial and, and well-mannered. Um, I'm not saying he's actually like that, but the fact that he's not maintaining that, com that composure um, is is a sign that, you know, maybe this is a different type of Putin that we're dealing with. Maybe this is a different type of mindset that we have really haven't seen him enter. And so maybe some of these rumors of him being a madman have some have some truths in them that need to be considered. I still don't think that this situation has really branched away from some sort of peaceful resolution. I, well, I mean, you can't undo the violence that's already occurred, but I still think that there is potential that this can find uh, a more reasonable uh, solution to it. Uh, of course, we're seeing lots of reporting about how the sanctions aren't doing much and how politicians should have done more, and now they're attacking each other. It's a bit late for that. But I still think that, um, you know, that there can be a nice in between here. Putin has already has made statements saying that he would like Ukraine to uh, announce neutrality and not join the UN and um, has tried to meet with them. The accuracy of these reports, because you know, Russian propaganda is is uh, a thing for sure, which we all know. And uh, so, you know, I'm taking that with a grain of salt, but. I'm not ruling it out. Obviously, that's what I would prefer to see. I think that's what everyone would prefer to see is some, some sort of backing down. Um, maybe, a, you know, and hopefully before we get even more footage of, you know, violent things occurring. It, the war in the modern day is crazy. The way that these headlines can reach people so quickly, the way that, you know, there's constant live streams, people sharing stuff on TikTok and Instagram and Twitter and uh, just horrific things because you know they it's impossible for these companies to filter everything that comes through and so much is coming through that lots of stuff that will probably get taken down right away just sneaks through especially if you're watching it um, and you catch stuff within seconds of it of it coming out so it's gruesome it's terrifying um, it's such surreal in a lot of cases you know a lot of these videos are are just wild and, and and a lot of it has been completely you know you don't need fake news because uh there's plenty of people misinterpreting everything that's going on in general um you know hence why they're pounding on war drums when they're not they're not thinking about it you know i think a lot of these people need to step back and say okay are you the one going over there to ukraine are is it your sons and daughters that are going to go fight this war that you are hammering uh, hammering the war drums for that you're last, you know, we don't want war. We don't want more bloodshed. I don't know why anyone would want that. And, you know, we, we should stop evil people, but 
we should run through the list of ways that we could peacefully end this, especially when we put ourselves at so much risk from a more terrifying adversary, uh, China, who's just waiting for the opportunity. So right now we're deploying tro troops to defend the UN, which I think we've mentioned that in the last video. And they're thinking about taking Russia off the Swiss payment system. Now this is a big deal because Putin straight up said, if you do this, Russia will see it as a declaration of war. And he's also made other statements about how, you know, he will act r right away and fast with, you know, I don't know, something, some, he said some, you know, Game of Thrones style dramatic things as well. And he's doing as much as he can to cause chaos within the Ukrainian government. Um, so, and that's the tactics they use. That's the way that this is going to go, you know. Propaganda is going to so rampant. Cybersecurity is going on. We we continue to see these cyber attacks. We continue to see this new way of of disinformation. But we're also at the same time seeing that he can't control everything, and um, Putin's ha definitely has no control over this narrative. And maybe China's watching this play out and seeing what it would be like if they tried this. Uh, and I doubt that they could do any better at controlling the narrative. Maybe at home they could better than Russia did, but it's hard with this amount of content everywhere, constant live streams and everything going on. You know, uh, Russia's own people are protesting, even though they know how dangerous it is. We saw dozens of people getting arrested um, in all sorts of Russian cities and riot police were having to come out and handle the situation. I mean, this is so far and beyond um out of his control you know this is what these countries rely on is their ability to control the narrative and, and manipulate things um and so we've seen this completely just blow up though and hopefully that leads to him pulling back a little bit and doesn't uh just send him further off the deep end out of frustration um because I imagine he's got to feel that so and doesn't want to look weak in front of everyone so and and you know and typically with these types of dictators you need to display power to get them to listen and we've done anything but that uh, I, I don't think anyone's really displayed any sort of strength other than Germany who actually decided to turn down the pipeline even though they it's pretty essential to their functionality but I mean, we've seen the EU unite though, which is great. There's a stronger Europe now uh, that's that's working together to find resolutions. And that's, I mean, that's excellent because we've seen them do nothing but, uh, but infighting and, um, you know, at each other's necks. And sure enough, this has united them almost instantly. And we've seen some uniting within the US as well, sort of. <laughs> we still are pretty polarized here. And uh, and don't forget, we still have all these other things at play. Um, you know, there's still, I still see some reports about COVID, um, although I don't personally think this is an issue anymore. You know, it's still a narrative that's carrying in some areas. Um, and, <sighs> And then we have all these economic issues and these pressures are building up on top of those. Um, I guess we should go ahead and transition to the markets. So we're seeing a bounce pretty much globally. Uh, all markets bounced after that initial drop off from the news. Um, I, I don't think this is the bottom. Uh, I think we could see a melt up for a few more days, but I'm, but even, okay, let's play it out this way. Even if, if this is the bottom, I'd rather be late than wrong. I can't predict geopolitics, predict geopolitics if I could talk. And I can't, and I, there's too many factors at play for that, that I don't want to, I'd rather be late than wrong in almost all cases. And I think being wrong here is a very big wrong. I think, you know, if you're wanting to go bullish, or you want to buy a bunch of calls. For me, I don't like that risk. Um, so I'm playing light, keeping a good amount of cash, uh, still have open hedges. Um, and, you know, especially with them wanting to take Russia off the SWIFT system. Um, and with, you know, the battle still ongoing. I think right now reports are that Russia's uh, surrounding the capital 
and attempting to take that. Uh, and I think by the end of the weekend, the, this, I mean, they'll probably have full control of Ukraine, which I think is actually just the beginning of the conflict, because as I said before, I don't think they can maintain control of it, uh, not without exerting a lot more resources than they already have. Um, and they will eventually feel these sanctions um, in some sort of way. Uh, it, I think it's the compounding effect of everything that will really start to bother them to to the extent that they react to it, not at all. But um, but over time, I mean, they, they even the expenditure of money for war, I mean, he set his economy back like a decade. So, and that's why the market crashed, not because of the sanctions, the Russian market, that is. So, you know, we saw a massive stock market drop from that. And unlucky for Putin, he's holding mostly Chinese currency. He should have been holding the U.S. dollar. We've seen their banks trying to switch over their reserves and switch up their balance sheets but why that wasn't better planned out on their part who i don't know so um looking at the rest of the world when we come when, when hopefully this gets resolved we still have all these economic pressures that we have to worry about and maybe we get a some changes in in the fed how much the fed wants to hike up interest rates. Maybe we get a 25 base point move instead of a 50 base point move. Although we still see people like Baltic coming out and saying like, hike it up. Um, and and I, there's, there's, a, there's pretty good reasoning for still doing that. I mean, inflation is still a massive issue and people are freaking out about Ukraine. Suddenly they forgot that there's any inflation going on at all. But um, having high inflation into uh, a war and potential conflict it's rough it's a really rough situation um, and if they don't handle this inflation it will only make if we the, there's people saying that if they don't hike interest rates it's bullish for markets but to me that's like a kicking the can down the road it's like oh great the crash is gonna be even bigger because of this that's the way definitely to view this like if, we're, if we continue to kick that can down the road, uh, it's just going to make the incoming crash even worse. So, or or cause the likelihood of something breaking in the financial system to be even worse. Which is something you must consider is that usually when the Fed starts raising interest rates or it does too much manipulation, they usually continue to do it until they break something. And so we still need to see how that plays out. With all those risks in play and everything that's going on, you know, I mean, the positive is that the economy is still seems to be holding up, um, although we should be seeing that slow down soon. Uh, and I think, you know, there'll be an equilibrium afterwards. I think a few years from now, everything will, might look great or, you know, depending on how this conflict goes, I mean, it, it could not. So there's a lot to be seen. There's a lot of uncertainty. We're seeing that still reflected in the markets. VIX is still above 25, uh, currently sitting at 27.59. And um, there's just no volume on these bounces. I mean, passive markets, we've talked about this before, but you know, passive markets will melt up. And you know, um, products like Vanguard's will uh, buy these dips automatically. And, and th I mean, I think that's what just what I'm seeing. I don't see any indication that big players are taking big positions. None of the liquidity is returned. We've seen it evaporate as the year's gone on. Um, and which really isn't a surprise to me. It's not really a major concern for me. But, it, you know, in this environment, it doesn't take much for the market to move down uh, at all. I mean, you know, think about Facebook. In a low liquidity environment, massive sell off hits Facebook. And then we saw a trillion dollar company move like 20% down, 30% down. That's. Companies that large should not move like that, right? This is a symptom of how this environment is. High volatility, lots of fear, and then you get a bad headline and the sell-offs are aggressive. You know, I was surprised the sell-off with uh, the Ukraine news was just as low of a hit as it was. So I don't see any reason to be, I, w I shouldn't say optimistic, but I shouldn't. I don't see any reason to become bullish. I see plenty of reasons to be optimistic. I think this still could still have a peaceful resolution. It's been a lot of damage done. It's really sad. I still think that there's ways to um, prevent further, you know, damage to everyone. And so, 
I think at the end of the day, we're just going to need to see how this plays out. Give it some more time. Um, and hopefully the right people make the right decisions and we can see some sort of peaceful resolution come from this. I, I do want to mention that um, uh, as well that uh, Lex Friedman, who's a podcaster who I really en- enjoy, um, is is currently in Russia or should be landing there soon and that Putin had agreed to do a podcast with him. And those are usually longer podcasts. And I am definitely interested and will be viewing that. Uh, and I'll probably mention it as well in the future if it does occur. But I think that's going to be uh, fascinating to view. And, um, and we'll leave it at that. Now, I'll see you on the next show, which will probably be tomorrow. And we'll kind of dive more into what's going on in the market. And... Uh, touch on crypto some more as well so we're overdue on that and I guess as a little announcement uh, before we say bye I'm currently working on moving most of the educational stuff out of the discord and bringing that over to YouTube so you're going to see some more educational videos soon Um, and if you're subscribed to the newsletter you're going to be getting a lot of content over there as well which I've already started the process of doing Um, This is to turn the Discord more into a trading and networking hub that's focused on uh, live streams and um, other content that'll be coming out soon, as well as the bots, of course. And we'll be replacing a lot of the educational content with more bot content. And in the future, maybe we add some stuff to the website. I am back to work on the website. Um, but it's not going to be anything related to noble trading. It's going to be kind of like a, a resume for me and what I'm doing. Uh, just to have a more professional link and more professional uh, digital billboard. So that's kind of what's going on. Um, and I'll see you on the next episode of the Nobel Show. Also, if you watch this all the way to end, I love you. And what do you think of these titles? Do you like the titles, the no BS titles? Or should I go back to something that's a little less in your face? Let me know down in the comments down below. Hope you all have a good weekend.